today in Nepal, where over 800 people have been killed in a tragic earthquake. The 7.8 magnitude quake has devastated most of Nepal's major cities, including the capital Kathmandu, where historic sites including the 19th century Darahara Tower have reportedly been destroyed. Tremors also triggered a deadly avalanche on Mount Everest. At least eight people were killed when the avalanche crashed into the Everest base camp, according to an official from the tourism ministry. The earthquake is believed to be the worst to hit Nepal in more than 80 years. The earthquake rattled neighboring India, where at least 30 people were killed. One death has also been reported in Bangladesh, where tremors damaged buildings and caused property damage. Mexico Senate approved early in the week the so-called anti-corruption bill that will grant greater powers to agencies in charge of reviewing the use of public funds. However, opposition lawmakers say the measure comes up short, leaving intact a politician's right to immunity from being charged. If the president of the republic cannot be tried for corruption, nothing is going to change. While Mexico's President Enrique Peña Nieto, in an official military event, applauded the legislation a day after its approval, I express my broadest recognition for the approval yesterday of the national anti-corruption system. People in the streets expressed their pessimism and distrust as to the timing of the legislation's passage. It's a political issue. It's being promoted somewhat to make people be quiet due to the recent scandals with the president. Meanwhile, political analysts affirm that the law represents the creation of more bureaucracies that will not be able to independently monitor political misconduct or the misuse of public funds. The dominant class has created this anti-corruption structure, this framework that is going to be assigned by and controlled by the very same political power of the country. In recent months, President Peña Nieto, his family and high-ranking officials in his cabinet have been embroiled in scandals, being the recipients of luxury homes from government contractors. Clayton Khan, Telesur, Mexico City. In Honduras, the health budget has been considerably reduced. This year, the country's main public hospital in Tegucigalpa received less than the half of the money it needs for medicines. It only has 1,200 beds when it needs at least 5,000 and there is only one nurse for every 30 patients. The hospital needs more than $200 million just for medicine, the most urgent stuff. And for the rest, we manage with what we've got, with surgery materials, buying equipment, and on we go. And when it comes to staff, well, we go on there too. Sometimes not carrying out things we should. The country's problem is that it invests very little in health, and this means that many other centers have shortages. And all those patients come here looking for medicine. After this hospital, sick people have no other place to go. In less than a month, the hospital could run out of medicines. Authorities are sure that they are demanding more funding from the government. The government has said that more funds could be found for health, but no more doctors or nurses could be hired. Meanwhile, in the hospital pharmacy, patients are receiving less than half of what they have been prescribed. I come from Ampala, and they give me medicine for three months, but I came in December and they didn't give me anything. I told the young lady to give me three months' worth because I come from far away, but they only gave me 50 pills when what I need are 90. People gather every day in the public hospital's pharmacy trying to get their medicine that in private pharmacies could cost 10 times more. The Honduran health system is feeling the strain after last year's decision to reduce the health budget, hitting the poor the hardest. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. Protesters are marching today in Baltimore in the United States after a similar rally at the police station there on Thursday against the alleged police murder of Freddie Gray. Gray's spinal cord was severed while in police custody. The police department's probe into the death will be completed by May 1st, and findings will be turned over to the city's chief prosecutor, who will determine whether to bring criminal charges in state court. The protests come after police shooting of black people in the United States continue and remain unpunished. At least 10,000 people are expected to march today. Police brutality exists in every community. Whether it's a black suburb or a black inner city neighborhood, these guys do this. They oppress us. They abuse us. And then they come and cover it up with all type of lies.
And today, Russians are marking the historic Albay Day, which is widely seen as the beginning of the end of the Second World War. The day marks the first encounter between Russian and U.S. troops in eastern Germany, which signified at the time that Allied forces had effectively cut Germany in half. U.S. and Russian troops famously shook hands near the River Albe in what became a symbol of peace in following years. A commemorative event marking the historic meeting was held this year in Torgau, the closest town to the historic Albe meeting. And finally, in Togo, people are lining up outside police station in Togo's capital, Lome, today for a presidential election widely expected to give the incumbent president, Fere Gansambe, a third term in power. 3.5 million voters will choose between Gassambe and four challengers headed by official opposition leaders Jean-Pierre Fabre. Gassambe has been president since 2005 when his father died after 30 years in charge. So far, voting seems peaceful with no signs of the tensions that led to violence in 2005 when hundreds died after the elections. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Tell us, sir, wherever the news, you'll be there.